So one of the things I like to do with a lot of my free time, uh, one of the things I haven't really included much of on the Carter the Brown YouTube channel, is uh, my interest in uh, like intellectual and uh, philosophical videos. I follow a lot of uh, very interesting people on YouTube, and I figured I would share uh, some of my thoughts on some of these people I have by watching some of their videos and discussing what they say. And so one of those individuals that I am like a huge fan of is Douglas Murray. Douglas Murray is a journalist uh, in Britain for the newspaper The Spectator, and the guy is incredibly knowledgeable on a whole bunch of different issues, like ridiculously knowledgeable, incredibly well-read, um, and I want to watch uh, a video with you, uh, a video, one of the first videos I saw of him. I haven't seen it in a long time, so it'll be a good video to react to. But it really, like, he, he, get, he gets his hooks in you and is like, tell the truth. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, I just want to share this clip with you guys. Uh, one of the interesting things about Douglas Murray, one of the things that's always been uh, interesting to me, at least, is... I would describe him as a gay, conservative, Christian atheist. He's a walking oxymoron in that way. He's gay, which you typically don't think of as being a characteristic of a conservative, but he is a conservative. He's a Christian in that he sees Christianity as an important force in the world, perhaps the force that will bring us all together. But he's an atheist in that he doesn't actually believe that, you know, Jesus Christ walked on water and rose from the dead. And so he's a very interesting individual. And this clip, I think, as you will agree, uh, shows just how interesting he is. And uh, I mean, honestly, there's not a single better speaker that I have um, seen in recent times. I mean, the guy can make a point like no one else and it, with, with a clarity that uh, is desperately needed in our current day and age in the age of madness that we're all living through. So let's watch it and we'll discuss. <laughs> the Joe Rogan experience. I only desire the approval of a relatively small number of people who I respect. And if they said to me, I think you're totally wrong on this, Douglas, and I listen. But when it's people who don't want me to do, me to do well, for instance, then of course I don't listen to them. And, and I think that's the same as it is in all of our lives. You know this. I mean, you know, if your wife says to you, you know, you're really onto the wrong thing here, then, then, you know, then you listen because, you know, she wants you to do well. If some guy in the street with an I hate Joe Rogan T-shirt on <laughs> tells you what you should do, obviously you're not going to listen to them. They, they don't want you to do well. And it, it's, 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 it, it's one of the tools we all have to, to, to hone in our lives, I suppose to work out who wants us to do well, who wishes us well, and to listen to them, even if they're critical of us, and they will be at times, and to separate out those people from people who just, of course they don't want you to do well. You know, hate you, hate everything about you and whatever. But but I'm just, you know, I, I, I don't have much uh, uh, sympathy for the people who bang on about being, you know, cancelled. I mean, I do when it's people who have, you know, ordinary jobs and they just... Yeah been horribly treated by the madness of this era. Absolutely. I have every sympathy for them, and a lot of the cases I write about in Madness of Crowds tries to highlight that. But I don't have much sympathy with public figures who say, I can't say what I think, and I can't speak up, and all this sort of thing. Because I just think, if you're not going to now, when are you going to? If you're not going to in this life, yeah, how what rich do you have to be until you can say F you? You'll do it. And so, no, I, I am... I, I'm I'm comfortable as comfortable as you can be in the end times, obviously, <laughs> uh, 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 as everything's burning down and there's plagues of locusts coming our way. Um, I'm you know, I, I, and I, ju I honestly urge other people to do the same. I um, it's 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 I can't say it's dandy, but it's um, <laughs> it's it's a pretty good life. I mean, I you know, I, I, and I have the satisfaction of knowing that I'm not lying. Yes, and. For young people watching in particular, this is just one of the most important things because, as I say somewhere in Madness of Crowds, the, the problem with being told, the problem with going along with being told to bend the knee, raise the fist, jump through the hoop, is that it demoralizes you. Mm. Mm. And it makes you a smaller 
person inside you 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 will be demoralized because you'll know that you shouldn't have done that and at some level you will think badly of yourself for having done it you'll feel regretful mm. you'll feel cowardly you'll feel small. and it will affect your life in other ways and hollow the opposite is also true the person who doesn't stand with the mob the person who doesn't go along with the mob the person who refuses to walk with the crowd will feel quietly but significantly better about themselves and i think will be a better person and they will achieve more in their lives whatever that is because they will have self-respect and that's what these that's what totalitarian movements across history always knew was that you grind people down mm. and make them agree to lies because you will then be able to make them do Soviet everything. Union, for sure. There's this, if I can say so, there's this very, very telling thing that happened in the communist era in Eastern Europe. Vaslav Havel, great late Czech leader, says this, when he was one of the great Czech dissidents and playwrights of the period in the 60s and 70s, he wrote a piece once, which, which is really worth reading again today, where he, he, he cites the example of a greengrocer in Prague who has to put up in his window, like everyone else, the notice that says, workers of the world unite. And it's sent by party headquarters to all green grocers, and you all have to hang it. And Václav Havel says a number of things happened from this. The first thing is that, of course, that the green grocer is showing to everyone that he is a party lawyer, so he wouldn't be able to operate as a business if he didn't do this thing. But it also hangs there every day as a sign of his subjugation. It's a little thing, but it hangs there as a sign of his subjugation. And it reminds him that he's not the man he could be. Now, one of the, one of the, one of the results of that is that such a person ends up hating mm. the people who make him hang the sign. Hates him because they have demoralized him. But Havel's point, among others, is you think you're doing a little thing but you're not, mm. you are diminishing your soul by doing this because you know that you could be something more than the person who just has to hang whatever party headquarters tells you to hang this week. Well said. Thank you. Absolutely. I am. I Outstanding. Echo. I echo. Episodes of the At the beginning of this year, 2021, uh, I made a, I had a New Year's resolution. Uh, in past years, you know, it was like, quit doing this, start doing this, you know. And most of the time, I failed at those re resolutions, as most people do. But this year, I wanted to have basically a general rule in all situations uh, for myself. I had one New Year's resolution, and what I wrote for myself was to stand when others sit. And the reason I wrote that was because of what Douglas Murray uh, really got across, which is that don't, don't go along with the crowd. I mean, he literally wrote a book, you know, called The Madness of Crowds, which is about don't go along with the mob. Do not, do not, you know, don't tell lies that you know to be lies. Don't just say things to fit in because you will demoralize yourself. Every single time you keep quiet when you know you should speak, or every single time you speak for something that you should not speak for, you demoralize yourself, you diminish yourself, you uh, begin to erase your own individuality, and you begin to just look like everyone else, and think like everyone else, and speak like everyone else. And that it, it weakens you as a human being. And so I put to stand when others sit, uh, just as a general rule, if I was ever in a room uh, where there was the conversation was going in a negative direction and people were happy about it, uh, I would always think, like in, for instance, uh, I had a couple classes this uh, most recent semester of college where, uh, I mean, it was a pretty uh, politically homogenous environment. Uh, most people were very, very liberal, some people even very far left, and the way conversations would go, they would often go uh, in that direction and there wouldn't be much opposition but because I had this resolution in my mind to stand when others sit I would feel obligated and I would speak out and offer a different perspective that would challenge the other students and you know sometimes I wouldn't argue my perspective very uh, effectively sometimes I would argue it very effectively but the point of me doing that was to simply just tell the truth the way I saw it and to not apologize for it and to not be a coward and keep quiet. Um, 
And honestly, it was Douglas Murray who inspired me to make that resolution. And uh, that clip, I mean, he's so, he, he so uh, exquisitely, to use a nice word, explains the importance of telling the truth in whatever situation you are in. Uh, another person that uh, Douglas Murray talks a bit about is uh, Alexander Solzhenitsyn. And uh, I've talked about him a little bit on this channel as well. Um, he's, uh, he was a Soviet dissident who um, wrote the Gulag Archipelago, which was basically an expose of the evil of uh, the Soviet Union regarding the prison system. And uh, Solzhenitsyn was a person who, uh, one of his general rules was to live not by lies. Uh, and he said, you know, you don't always have to speak up, but just simply do not allow yourself to sit comfortably in the presence of liars and the lies they tell. If you're in a room and it's a dangerous situation where you can't speak out, just simply leave the room. Or if you can speak out, then speak out. Live not by lies. Do not hang out with them. Do not uh, tolerate them. Uh, and I think everybody should should live in that way uh, in our current day and age because I see a lot of people. I saw it among my classmates at, uh, at school this most recent semester and just everywhere. A lot of people, they just, they're too afraid to really speak their mind. Um, and when an entire population is afraid of speaking their mind, then the people that are not afraid of speaking their mind, primarily the crazy people, run the show. And that is a bad situation. Um, and, you know, that sort of situation could lead to the uh, situation that Murray described with the person having to put a sign on his door that, you know, was a sign of his subjugation. And I will say one thing that he said in there re regarding that, um, that is a little, makes me feel a little weird is, you know, during the whole coronavirus pandemic situation, um, we were all required to, you know, wear masks uh, when we went into different places and a lot of storefronts were required to put signs on their doors with uh, requiring masks and what he said there I mean it kind of freaks me out a little bit obviously we're not in the same situation that uh, Czech Czechoslovakia was in uh, back in the day but um, there's lots of weird things going on in our day and age and it's very important that every single one of us tells the truth no matter what, and uh, you know, for us to stand for the truth when others uh, refuse to stand, to stand when others sit. Um, and uh, yeah, so I just wanted to share that clip with you guys because it's really amazing and you get to see like, man, Douglas Murray, he really has a way of putting something that really grabs you. And um, yeah, he, he's honestly an inspiration to me. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, those are my thoughts on uh, Douglas Murray passionately explains the importance of telling the truth. Uh, please let me know what you thought of the clip in the comment section below. And also, if there are any videos that you want me to react to, um, you know, please leave those in the comment section as well. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, if you like this video, then please like it and subscribe. Tell your friends about the channel. And never forget to tell the truth.